Despite critics' fears, thousands of Americans and Afghan allies will be left behind, creating a possible hostage situation. The White House is holding firm. It will pull all U.S. forces out of Afghanistan by Tuesday. Joining us now, Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell, who has urged the president to disregard that deadline. Senator, you just heard my conversation with National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Your reaction? Yeah, I think what's been lost in all this, uh, Chris, is why we went there in the first place. Uh, we went there to prevent the Taliban from having a regime that would allow terrorists to uh, constitute themselves and hit us again here at home. It's been a total success. Uh, if you, this term endless war, let's take a look at it. Uh, the last seven months, the Afghans have lost more people fighting than we have over 20 years. They've taken 65,000 casualties. We've taken roughly 2,000 in 20 years. The last year and a half, we've lost no one. With a continued deployment of 2,500 people, we were, in effect, keeping the lid on, keeping terrorists from reconstituting, and having a light footprint in the country. The policy was working. Therefore, I think calling it an endless war or, or claiming that we're somehow trying to get involved in a civil war, is a domestic uh, civil war, is simply not accurate. We went over there to protect us here at home. We've not had a mass casualty attack from over there in these 20 years. I'd call that a successful policy. Now, we're looking at the exit. And over the next uh, two days, uh, our heroic military is doing as best they can with a horrible policy decision. This is one of the worst foreign policy decisions in American history. Much worse than Saigon, because after we left Saigon, there weren't Vietnamese terrorists who were planning on attacking us here at home. Uh, that we leave behind exactly uh, what we went in to solve 20 years ago, and I fear for the future in continuing the war on terror. You know, <laughs> just because we decide to quit fighting doesn't mean the terrorists go away. So they're still out there. They're invigorated, spirited, they're emboldened, and excited about the success they see in bringing America to its knees in Afghanistan. I get into the big policy question, the total withdrawal in a moment, but let's talk about where we find ourselves right now, because we are where we are today, and it's clear the president is going to pull up all uh, U.S. forces by Tuesday. He's, he's made it clear he's going to do that, which raises the question, given that reality, how do we get the rest of the Americans and Afghans out of the country? How do we protect ourselves going forward from a terror attack that, that emanates from Afghanistan? And how do we deal with the Taliban? Very poorly, frankly. Uh, we will we'll not have sources on the ground. Uh, the the over-the-horizon attacks, such as was carried out, is, you know, quite limited in effectiveness. And every either American or Afghan ally left behind is either a potential victim or a hostage. Remember, the Taliban love taking hostages. They've done this before. It puts us in an extraordinarily difficult position. And also, remember, Afghanistan is landlocked. There's only one way in by air and one way out by air. We don't have sort of friends in the neighborhood that would provide us the kind of intelligence that we would normally get, for example, in Syria or in Africa or in Yemen. So it, it's going to be extremely difficult. We have very, very little leverage uh, to extract Syria, uh, in Africa, additional Americans or Afghan allies from this uh, landlocked country. I want uh, to pick up because you say we have in Africa. very little leverage. You, you just heard. Jake Sullivan say we have a lot of leverage, and he talked about international pressure, diplomatic pressure, and especially financial pressure, because we and some of our Western allies have frozen billions of dollars in assets that the Taliban is very much going to need 
to, to continue to do business. Do you not see that as enormous leverage? Well, they, they have other sources of revenue, as you know, the Haqqani Network and other uh, groups uh, engage in organized crime, basically. Uh, they have other sources of uh, revenue, and of course, they're not particularly concerned about international pressure. Uh, these are barbarians uh, who uh, certainly are not motivated by uh, what others uh, may think of them, and they've got the neighboring countries that have actually been sympathetic to them. The, the uh, Pakistan government has always been somewhat sympathetic to them, so they've got kind of a friendly neighbor as well. So we have little or no leverage to get our people out or our allies out. You know, one thing I think has been really encouraging is to see the American veterans who've come back from over there working with their former interpreters uh, communicating with them, trying to get them back to the, to the airport uh, to get out of there. The American veterans, we've heard from many of them in my state, and I know other members of Congress have, have been working overnight trying to get their friends and allies out of that country. It's been quite inspiring to see all of these veterans pitching in and trying to help their former colleagues. Let's, let's turn to the big policy question that you started with, and that is the decision to pull out of Afghanistan in the first place. You've been very consistent. You opposed it when Donald Trump started the process. You opposed it when Joe Biden continued the process. And back when he announced that, yes, in April, he said, I'm going to get everybody out by the end of August, you noted the fact, as you did today, that for more than a year, not a single American had been killed in combat in Afghanistan. Uh, President Biden was asked about that uh, this week, and he pointed out the fact that they didn't attack us after Donald Trump had, had made the deal that all of Americans were get out. Uh, take a look at what the president had to say. I have only one alternative, pour thousands of more troops back into Afghanistan to fight a war that we had already won relative to why the reason we went in the first place. Senator, does President Biden have a point there? If in April he had said, hey, the, the, the Trump deal is off, we're staying in, and in fact, we're going to beef up the number of troops, he contends we'd have been back in a full-scale war with the Taliban and unfortunately taking a lot of casualties. It's totally not accurate. Uh, once again, the president's off the mark. Uh, we hadn't lost as many as 13 people, which we lost Thursday, in any of the last four years. In fact, our casualties since 2014 have been quite modest, quite modest. Uh, we lost more, I repeat, more of our military personnel last Thursday than we lost in any one of the last four years. So the violence has been dramatically reduced for American personnel. Remember, in the whole war, Chris, we have regretfully lost a couple of thousand of our people. We, we, that's very regretful. But the Afghans have lost 65,000. They have been fighting, and we've been in the background helping them with counterterrorism and the ongoing training of the military. The policy was working, if you remember why we went there to keep the Taliban and them with counter-terror and the terror and the onerous from able to operate with impunity so they could attack us again here at home. Senator, there, uh, I've got left. I want to ask you and the one question on another uh, subject. You've been very active on the, attack the issue of pushing vaccines. You've even taken some of your campaign funds to public announcement. The highest the one number of new COVID cases right now are in Florida and Texas pushing where two governors have banned ma mandates in schools and other places. Do you think that, that Governor DeSantis and Governor Abbott are making a mistake banning individual institutions, school districts, uh, from, from imposing mask mandates? Just you know, I'm kind of willing to give governors advice about how they ought to carry out their responsibilities during the pandemic, but I do think it's important to remember that 90 percent of the people in the hospitals are unvaccinated. So the answer to this is get vaccinated. If we could keep saying that over and over and over again, 
Uh, I think that's the key to this. This is a crisis among unvaccinated Americans who seem to be reluctant to believe that vaccination works. It does. Senator McConnell, thank you. Thanks for your time this Sunday. It's always good to talk with you, sir. Thanks, Chris.